in the shed. The fat controller sat in his office and listened. The fat controller frowned and said, Oh, what a nuisance passengers are. How can I possibly work with all this noise? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, what is it? It was the station master, looking very worried. Eh, uh, there's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking. There is no train. And the passengers are saying that this is a bad railway. Uh -huh. Indeed, really. We cannot allow that. Now, will you quieten the passengers, please? And I will go and speak to Henry. The fat controller found Henry, Gordon and James looking sulky. Now, come along, Henry. It's time your train was ready. But Henry wouldn't answer. It was Gordon who said, uh, Henry's not going, so there. And neither are James or I. We won't shunt like common tank engines. We are important tender engines, if you don't mind. You fetch our coaches for us, and we'll pull them. But we won't shunt. Tender engines don't shunt. So there. And all three engines let off steam in a cheeky way. And the fat controller said, Oh, indeed. Engines on my railway do as they told. I'll go and find Edward. Edward was shunting. I say, Edward, leave those tracks, will you please? I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Oh, thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. But when the fat controller came next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came past, clanking and hissing very rudely. <laughs> Why, bless me, what a noise! I know. They all hiss at me, sir. They say tender engines don't shunt. And last night, they said I had black wheels. I haven't. Have I, sir? No, Edward, of course you haven't. You've got nice blue ones. And I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, you'll be happier in your own yard. Hmm, we need a tank engine here. And the fat controller went to an engine workshop and saw all sorts of tank engines. At last, he saw a smart little green engine. Hmm, yes, yes. I think so. That's the one. Um, I see there. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, oh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good engine. <laughs> I'll call you, um, Percy. Yes, Percy. Do you like that, Percy? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So the fat controller drove Percy back to the yard and introduced him to Edward. Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. But Percy just went... That really frightened Henry. He jumped and ran away. Edward laughed and said, Oh, ho, 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 how beautifully you wished him, Percy. I can't make a noise like that. Oh, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshops. You have to make a noise like that to be heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Hello, Edward. Oh, hello, Thomas. The fat controller sent for me. I expect he wants help. 
Oh, he does indeed, Thomas. Here he comes now. Well done, Thomas. You have been quick. Now listen, Henry, Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like common tank engines, so I've shut them up. And I want you both to run the line. Common tank engines, indeed. We'll show them. Well done, Thomas. And Percy here will help, too. Won't you, Percy? Oh, sir. Yes, sir, please, sir. Edward and Thomas pulled the trains. They started at opposite ends and whistled to each other as they passed. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Henry, Gordon and James stayed shut in the shed and were cold, lonely and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly.